how do you build a championship level roster that's through the draft if you want to pair Kate Cunningham with a superstar? Kate Cunningham is your alpha 1A. And who's the 1B? Who did you do? Gorillas oh. come out and they start, you know. Whatever ends up happening, the truth is, you're four years away, Detroit. I think that's the number. Uh, I'm just going to get into it. Do it. Oh, boy. You know, a lot Full of talk set. about the number five overall pick. Who did you do? Uh oh. You know. You know, the, the gorillas come out and they start, you know, yeah. pounding their chest. No, the big debate yesterday. Yeah, we'll call it a debate, debate, whatever you want. How the Detroit Pistons can build a championship roster around Kay Cunningham. And, you know, guys, uh, I, as much as I want to sit here and say, uh, well, you just get multiple superstars and then we, we close the book. That One, it's not that easy, especially if you're not able to bring superstars via free agency that's one of the modern ways that these super teams or superstar oriented teams are built uh, that is something detroit could struggle to do now could they get a very good number two a very good number three in free agency absolutely but the only way they're going to be able to develop one a alpha stars is through the draft that's it and i want you to look at some of the teams that are in the eastern and Western Conference Finals right now. The Golden State Warriors, yes, one of the rare modern dynasty super teams that were built through the draft. Draymond Green, second round pick. Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, first round picks, right? So that is your anomaly, but it is also not really an anomaly. Uh, it is only an anomaly based on success. But if you look at Boston, multiple Eastern Conference Finals appearances. Always typically getting out of the first round, contending, competing. Young, early in the process. Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown. Now, what, four or five years into their careers, they're a much better version of what they were not too long ago. But again, the Celtics drafted them. Okay, let's look at the Dallas Mavericks. One superstar player. The Mavericks look like the Pistons to me. Although... Their talent, I could argue, could be worse, to be honest with you. Uh, they've just had more time to build around Luka. And what they've built around Luka is a bunch of undrafted free agents and second-round picks that just aren't good enough. So I don't want to hear any Luka slander this morning. Yes, his ball usage is up. He is giving his teammates open looks. Can't help him there. They're down 3-0 in a series. But look at them. Kate Cunningham could be your Luka Doncic. What else do you have to offer on the Pistons? Sadiq Bey, very nice. Okay, like him. Can he be a legitimate number two? I don't think so. He hasn't shown that he could consistently deliver 22, 24-point performances night in and night out. And that's what you're looking for. And then I look at the, of course, Miami Heat. Uh, not necessarily built through the draft, right? But, you know, the Bam Adebayo. Signing a free agent of Kyle Lowry. Not, again, not an alpha one. Victor Oladipo, they traded for. Jimmy Butler, not an alpha one, but you can put pieces around and be successful. Now, do you want to win an NBA championship? Of course you do. But how do you build a championship-level roster that's through the draft if you want to pair Cade Cunningham with a superstar? If you want to surround him with veteran pieces and proven players, well, that's what free agency is for. But just to FYI, Detroit Pistons fans, I find it very difficult to believe you are going to land one of the coveted free agents, unless, and again, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, Maddie, which was possibly Devin Booker in 2024. Lots of talks surrounding DeAndre in the summer. He's a restricted free agent. Um, I, I don't want to get involved in that chatter. I don't think it's important right now, but what you need to build around Kate is you need to give him shooters. Make sure there are shooters on the perimeter. You're going to need a pick and roll big man who can also stretch the, uh, stretch the floor and give you some three pointers a night. Marvin Bagley, you saw what he did for Kate Cunningham the moment he arrived in Detroit. The pick and roll game was absolutely amazing to watch. And then you look at depth. Depth is so important in the NBA. You look at Killian Hayes coming off the bench, Isaiah Stewart coming off the bench. I can look at that and say, okay, that's my defensive unit coming out of every, you know, what, 14 to 18 minutes a night. Isaiah Stewart probably less minutes. Killian Hayes maybe more than that. That's, that's the future of this team. Cade Cunningham is your alpha 1A. 
And who's the one B? Devin Booker in two years? Is it Shade and Sharp at five? Jade and Ivy at five? Whatever ends up happening, the truth is, you're four years away, Detroit. I think that's the number. I really do. And if any of you disagree, lines are open all day today. All of you. 313-552-6322. Be my guest. I think it's a four-year process. Now, when I say it's a four-year process, I mean to get to an Eastern Conference final. Can you make the playoffs next year or the year after? Yeah, I think so. I do. Kate has shown a unique ability to make everybody around him better. Luca has done that. Uh, you know, you look at even Trey Young last year, he, they made a run. It is possible with these young up-and-coming players to have some success. I, I don't believe it's championship-level success, but do you expect to win a championship before he's in his prime anyways? Cade's only one year in, guys, so you're looking at another four or five years before he enters his true prime where he becomes a top three, top five player in the NBA, which I believe he can be. So... Yeah, and I wanted to bring that up too. I think we forget sometimes how lucky we are that Cade can play with literally anybody. So regardless of you know the actual player, the size, the shooting guards that we need, he can make everybody around him better, and I think that speaks huge for him and the Pistons as well. So, I mean, we could see him flourish next year with a new team, with you know whoever we decide to put around him. I think they can still be just as great. I think... Maybe four years is a little bit too long, but... Is it? Maybe. Okay, so the Warriors drafted Steph Curry. They had three 29-31 seasons in a row. They then won 42 games in year four. And then finally, year five, once Steph started to come into his own and Clay and Draymond, it was Mark Jackson. It was 50 wins. Mm -hmm. It was first round, second round. And then it was year eight, year nine of Steph Curry. And it was Steve Kerr, championships, Finals, what, three, four, five consecutive finals, I believe. Unbelievable. And then it's now they're back there one more time. They could be. Yeah. They're up 3 0 right now. So, yes, you built through the draft. And do I expect a dynasty out of Cade Cunningham? That is so unfair for me to even put on him <laughs> one year in. But I think the point is you can build around him. Yeah. And it's going to take time. Killian Hayes is a baby. Sadiq Bey is still they're a young kid. They're all babies. They're all babies. They can't even drink. <laughs> it's one of the youngest rosters, if not the youngest roster in the NBA. So, you know, I, I look at this basketball team and I say they're early in the process. If you want to expect them to vie for a play-in game, I don't mind. But I'm not going to sit there in the first round and say they should be contending. No. Yeah. No, they shouldn't. I think that's, like, not realistic. But I think four years is, I don't know. When I look at Cade Cunningham, we've said it all year long. Like, he just plays like a veteran. He's has that slow game. He thinks before he acts. Like, that is something <clears throat> that I think is different than sure, Steph but Curry. Four years based on the fact that I don't think they sign a superstar free agent. Now, yeah, if they go get Devin fair. Booker in 2024, that speeds up the timeline. And even if they get DeAndre Ayton this offseason... I don't believe that significantly uh, propels them into a top four seed where be, they become instant contenders. You still need to surround him with shooting. You haven't addressed what you're going to do with Jeremy Grant. And a lot of people are saying, flip Jeremy Grant for the number four pick, the number seven pick for another rookie. So you're going to pick two players in the top five. And they're supposed to play with Cade. And their potential is p possibly to be alpha status. Mm -hmm. Do we hear ourselves? Right. You can do it. Fine. But don't tell me the Pistons are going to contend until four or five years from now. That's the reality. So, look, at the end of the day, Kate Cunningham proved his worth year one. Uh, I thought he was exceptional. Uh, we don't need to get into Rookie of the Year conversation. Obviously, you guys know how I feel about it. I thought it was a joke. Uh, whatever. I I've made my point many times. But that guy moving forward is more capable of leading the Pistons to success than I would argue Scotty Barnes could for Toronto, Evan Mobley could for Cleveland, hell, even Jalen Green could for Houston. So Detroit, you're in a great situation this morning. Uh, what are we, May 24th? Guys, uh, I, I love this comment. I, I really do. People here are... By the way, you guys are awesome in the comment section. Shout out to all of you. You guys are freaking hilarious. Sometimes I'm trying to focus and... <laughs> I just read some comments. I'm like, oh, my God. Um, I do want to uh, ask you one question, Maddie, before we uh, skate out for a few seconds. 
given Cade's rookie year, given all the development, um, I think people just need to accept Dwayne Casey's the coach for the next two, three years. I don't think they're going to fire him unless he is underachieving. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can assign playoff contention to this team yet. Now, do you want to win a certain amount of games? Hey, I can respect that. But I think he's a coach not only next year, but the year after for sure. I don't see him leaving. Yeah, and I was one of the people that wanted him out back in January or whatever. So I'm asking you the question, honey. <laughs> um, but, no, I agree. I think he is the coach for the next couple of years. And, and I've said this previously as well. He's won the locker room. Those guys love him. Um, and he's proven with the Raptors that he can build a team. He can, you know, be successful. So I think he's that guy for us for the next couple of years at least. Um, and he has proven to make this team better as the season went on. So I think, I think he's somebody that we can look forward to seeing for the next couple of years for sure. Absolutely. And again, uh, just to clarify my timeline, the four years, everybody in the chat and watching at home, the four years is to get to an Eastern Conference final. You've seen Luka now do it. You've seen Trey Young do it. I think Cade possibly could be as good as Luka. Definitely, I believe he can be better than Trey Young, especially given his size and his ability to move on the court. Now, again, do I want to see the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Final in four years and Cade is surrounded by nothing? A bunch of undrafted free agents, second-round picks? No, ideally not. Jalen Brunson, who's not showing up? No, ideally not. But you look at the Pistons, I think they're in a better situation. I think you can attach the Pistons more, more to the Boston Celtics, more to the Golden State Warriors in terms of how they're rebuilding than you would say the Atlanta Hawks or the Dallas Mavericks because those teams are so star-centric. I look at Boston. Jason Tatum's the star. Marcus Smart is the second most important player. And then Jalen Brown. And then I look at Golden State. Do I need to say it? Clay, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole. Uh, Steph Curry, this team is built around selflessness. And there's one thing I love about Cade Cunningham, and that is his ability to be selfless. We talk about individual star players up and coming. Steph Curry, to me, is one of the greatest superstars ever because of his ability to just take a step back, allow everybody around him not only to shoot shots or, or you know, to get theirs. Or No, no, no. It's his ability to lead by example and by facilitating and getting his teammates better open looks. And for me, that is everything. I think Kate can absolutely do that. Can he do it to the level of Steph? Guys, I mean, he's going into his second year. I don't think that's fair or objective for me to even bring up. 